2023 is a very important year for Honda. First and foremost, they're refreshing part of the lineup with the Accord, Pilot, and CRV, but also they're pushing going hybrid and offering a list of incentives to go in that direction. Now, Honda is no stranger to offering hybrids. They've been doing this since the Insight, but also last generation, you had the Accord and CRV hybrid that you could choose from if you wanted better fuel efficiency. But 2023 is very different, and specifically for this generation CRV, everything is bigger and better than before. You have better technology, superior driving dynamics, and also a very classy and stylish exterior. And in this video, I want to go over everything about the hybrid model. Take a look at the the features, take it out for a test drive, and also see why, if you are looking for fuel efficiency in your next crossover, maybe taking a look at the 2023 Honda CRV might be a great decision. Now, before I get in this video, I want to give a huge shout and thank you to Honda North in Danvers, Massachusetts, for allowing me to this review. The link will be in the description below so you can check out their extensive Honda inventory. Also, before we get started, make sure to hit the subscribe button and click the notification bell so you're notified every time a new video goes live on the channel. And so, without wasting any further time, let's get right in this review. With the impending era of electrification on the horizon, Honda has been proactive in recent years to position themselves as leaders in the rapidly growing hybrid market as crosstown rival Toyota has gained some notoriety with the RAV4 Prime. Since the CRV has been a staple in the lineup for decades, it only seems right that Honda would develop and engineer their latest generation to set the tone for where this Japanese manufacturer wants to go in the near and possibly distant future. As we experienced last fall, this new CRV is built on a platform that's more rigid and refined than ever. But with hybrid technology, this could very well be the pick in the Honda family over the full gas-powered model that's offered this year. Starting off with pricing, the CRV Sport Touring Hybrid comes in at $39,100, and for 2023 is the top trim for this model. Being one of America's best-selling crossovers, Honda has gradually shifted the CRV's role within the lineup putting far more emphasis on hybrid technology than in the past. And that becomes abundantly clear even before stepping foot inside, as the road presence has more substance and draws your attention immediately, pushing buyers to opt for the sport and sport touring if they desire an aggressive design. As the compact crossover segment continues to upsize, this generation's CRV grows in length by three inches and experiences a marginal increase in width to better compete against the Volkswagen Tiguan and Hyundai Tucson, who've pushed the boundaries of this market in terms of exterior dimensions. For ground clearance, you're looking at about 8 inches, which should be enough to take on snow-covered roadways during the winter. Superficially, it's the sporty aesthetics that come equipped on the hybrid trims that could solely sway a car shopper to choose the Sport or Sport Touring if they're indifferent on fuel economy and price as we'd argue that what you see on the surface is how the CRV should have been presented across the five trim levels for 2023. With a gloss black grille and accents that connect into the LED headlights, the CRV immediately draws your attention. And the trapezoidal vents on the lower portion of the front bumper is a trendy design, making this crossover more distinguishable on the roadways. Surprising to see on a compact crossover in this segment, there will be functional side air curtains, which are usually just for decoration. But the 2023 CRV has a purposeful design that reflects Honda's ambitions to go a little more upscale with this crossover, as the higher end of the lineup enters the $40,000 mark. Moving over to the side profile, the Sport Touring will be sitting on 19-inch gloss black alloy wheels and is the only trim not sitting on 18s for 2023. Despite the larger tire size, we didn't notice a significant difference compared to the EXL we had featured last year. However, there is a minor increase in road noise when traveling at highway speeds. Continuing the color contrast, you'll have gloss black side mirror caps with turns of the indicators to go along blind spot detection for added safety. Then coming around to the back, as part of the aggressive look the hybrid trims receive, 
The unique rear spoiler and dual exhaust outlets adds character to the CRV and completes the overall appearance for this crossover. As mentioned during the last time we had checked out this generation, the rear fascia is an evolution of the CRV's road presence from prior model years, taking design elements from its predecessor but modernizing the aesthetics to appear cutting edge and up to date. Because of the contrasting accents found throughout, the hybrid doesn't look generic, and in fact looks far more striking at first glance compared to the EX and EXL. Under the hood, the CRV hybrid is powered by a direct injected 2 liter 4 cylinder engine and dual electric motors to produce 204 horsepower and 247 pound feet of torque, and is paired with an eCVT. Compared to the full gas powered model we had featured last year, the hybrid is not only quicker, but the low to mid range torque propels the CRV along to provide far more confidence when entering highways and passing slower drivers. Aided by the electric motors, the CRV's on road performance is refined and smooth, feeling more in line with rivals in this segment, whereas the 1.5 liter 4 cylinder does struggle to get up to speed, resulting in some droning during accelerations, whereas the eCVT will simulate gear shifts to provide the perception that it's a traditional automatic. By going with the Sport Touring Hybrid, all wheel drive does come standard. But the primary advantage of opting for this model is the impeccable fuel economy of 40 miles per gallon in the city and 34 miles per gallon on the highway. Stepping inside, you'll be greeted by power adjustable and heated leather trim seats for both the driver and passenger, with the driver's side having memory seat functionality. Impressive for this generation, the bolstering is relatively aggressive for a compact crossover offering an abundance of support and cushioning to keep you and your passengers feeling comfortable on longer drives. In front of you, there will be a half analog, half digital instrument cluster, and by using the button mounted on the left side of the heated leather wrapped steering wheel, you can scroll through a variety of information, while also having the ability to customize what you see from this screen. You can also monitor fuel economy, power flow, driver attention, and the onboard navigation. Then taking a glance at the infotainment system, you'll have a 9-inch touchscreen with wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto compatibility. And coming standard on the Sport Touring will be the Bose Premium Sound System to amplify the audio of your favorite music. The current user interface that Honda has been integrating into their interiors is the right balance of being modern while still being easy to use. There'll be physical buttons and a dial mounted on the left for your home screen and volume and tuning, with quick access icons found at the bottom of the head unit to conveniently get you to different menus. More importantly, this infotainment system is quick to respond, with the resolution and quality being easy to read and to get adjusted to. While not being the most in-depth user experience, it's perfect for shoppers who aren't technologically inclined or a bit apprehensive using touchscreens. As always, you will have a multi-angle rear backup camera with trajectory to help you park the CRV, to go along with parking sensors and rear cross-traffic alert. As we make our way towards the center console, to the delight of many, there'll be a row of buttons and dials for the dual zone climb control, heated front seats, and front and rear defrosters, which is great to see as manufacturers are moving all these functions to the head unit to clean up the dashboard for a minimal and simplistic look, whereas Honda is sticking to tradition. Below will be a wireless phone charging pad and additional storage for some loose change. And you'll also find a USB and USB-C input and 12 volt outlet. Then for the center console, the hybrid does have a drive mode selector where you can change between sport, normal, eco, and snow, all of which affect throttle response and steering input. For the center storage compartment, you'll have plenty of room for smaller items, and rounding out the front seating area, above will be a power moonroof, which lets in some natural light to the interior. So quickly taking a look 
at the second row seating area, the hybrid trim is no different than the full gas powered model. So legroom is going to be no different. It's going to be very spacious and family friendly. I'm not going to draw this out and be redundant since I have reviewed the CRV recently on the channel and I'll leave the link in the description below for that review. But one thing I do want to point out though is that just like with the gas powered model, these seats do recline giving you more headroom which is perfect if you do have taller passengers sitting in the second row. What I love about this vehicle though is that when it comes to the interior spacing, it's a lot of shoulder room, a lot of leg room as well. So if you do have adults or children, everyone is going to be comfortable back here. Now on the Sport Touring, you are going to have two rear air vents to go along with two USB-C inputs. And then rounding out the second row seating area, you will get a center armrest with two cup holders. Now coming around to the back, you're going to receive a power lift gate. And inside, behind the second row of seats, you're looking at right around 39.3 cubic feet of room. Now, that wouldn't necessarily be noteworthy when you're comparing it to the gas-powered model. However, last generation's hybrid for the CRV had around 32, 33 cubic feet. So you're getting better practicality with the 2023 model. Now, of course, this is identical to the gas-powered variant. So if you are wondering which one is the right choice for you, I still think the hybrid is the way to go for a number of reasons. There's a lot of incentives to going in the hybrid direction and practicality is certainly one of them if you are looking to upgrade from your last generation CRV. Then with the second row seats folded, you're looking at right around 75, 76 cubic feet of room, which would be on the higher end in this class. So if you are looking for a family friendly vehicle and crossover, and you are somebody who maybe goes on road trips frequently, or you just have your family with you at all times, and you're going to soccer practice or any other errands you might be running during the week, you'll be able to fit all your items back here, no problem. Now you do have side pockets on both sides of the rear cargo area, where you could probably fit some water bottles, car detailing, equipment or even a first aid kit. Now not equipped on our model today, we do have the indentations for the rear car cover, which will keep all your valuable items out of sight. So if you are like me and you have camera gear or anything else of value, you can leave them back here and have that peace of mind knowing that no one will be able to peek in and steal what you have. And then once you're done, just press the button and the lift gate will close automatically. Incentives. That is the buzzword throughout this review because Honda has given you a list of reasons as to why you want to go hybrid over the full gas powered model. And it starts off with the exterior design where it looks more aggressive, classy, upscale, and really fits the price point at around $40,000. But then we take a look at the features such as the two liter four cylinder engine, also the onboard navigation, the hands-free lift gate, and the heated steering wheel. Now you have features that makes this vehicle more appealing at around $40,000. But the reason why I have returned to the CRV for the early portion of 2023 is because this vehicle is so superior to the outgoing model and drives so much better than the 2022 CRV in many ways. Honda has added a lot of rigidity to this chassis, so it feels more premium and upscale. But also that translates to the steering as well, where it's tighter and does give you some feedback on back roads. And it feels more reflective of a European crossover, but also with handling tendencies that really reminds me of the Mazda CX-5. And that's not a bad thing at all because I think for a lot of vehicles in this market, they're trying to inspire people to have some fun when they are commuting to work. But also, they're trying to give you a vehicle that does feel luxurious. I'm noticing that with the CRV for this generation where it is borderlining on being entry level luxury rather than just being a mainstream crossover, a mainstream compact crossover. And you see that with the interior, the way it's laid out, the way it's designed. Honda has done an amazing job with their interiors right now. Also, what, one thing I love as well is the fact you have physical dials for the climate control and you still have physical buttons on the infotainment system as well. So a lot of buyers who maybe aren't mo the most tech driven or tech focused, they're gonna love having some of those analog features and characteristics. But what they're also gonna love too is that with the hybrid, it just feels more refined than the gas powered model. The 1.5 isn't a bad engine at all, but it is a bit underpowered for its segment. Since you do have the hybrid technology, 
it performs smoother and it also has a bit more power off the line. So you're going to notice that it's a bit torquier as well, which I think is more suited for somebody who wants to have a vehicle that is a bit quicker in a straight line. One of the highlights for this model is the fact that when you are cruising at around 40 miles an hour, the interior is very quiet. You don't hear the powertrain, you don't hear the outside world at all, and you feel very isolated from that outside world. So on those longer commutes, on those road trips, you're going to feel very comfortable, relaxed, and it's going to feel like a luxury vehicle behind the wheel, which is more important for a crossover at around $40,000. Now the ECBT does mimic the gear shifts quite nicely. I experienced the ECBT in the Accord and I was pretty impressed because this does feel like a traditional automatic and brands are really focusing on that, especially Japanese manufacturers who are known to use CBTs predominantly for their lineups. So if you are somebody who has not liked CBTs in the past, the ECVT in the CRV and the Accord is going to feel very traditional to that automatic that maybe you've experienced with your last vehicle. Also, of course, it's far better than the CVT that was found in last generation as well. And that's regardless of whether you go with the hybrid or the full gas powered model. So we're going to approach the highway here. We're going to see how the two liter compares to the 1.5. Personally, I think there's going to be a lot more confidence with a two liter. And we're going to pop it into sport mode. And immediately I notice that the throttle response is definitely geared towards enthusiastic driving. It picks up for sure. Now, when you're not mashing on that gas pedal the ECBT does its job it mimics the gear shifts very nicely even during harder accelerations so if you are somebody who drives responsibly you're not going pedal to the metal you're going to like the ECBT as paired with the two liter now I have seen reviews where people go full throttle and then you start getting the droning but if you're just an average consumer an average driver this is gonna be more than enough now, one thing I like about the 2 liter is that it has a lot of power where you can get on the highway very safely. Also, you have enough power to pass slower drivers with ease and with confidence. That's something I didn't have with the 1.5. The 1.5 was very slow and lethargic, whereas with the 2 liter, it does feel sportier, it does feel more inspiring, and more importantly, it's more responsive. Now at highway speeds, it does feel pretty composed on the roadways, which is a bit of a surprise with the higher ground clearance. Now also thing too is that with the bigger tires on the Sport Touring, some of the road noise is gonna translate to the cabin. However, this feels very much on par with other vehicles in this market. So I wouldn't feel too concerned about that. Also, when you are cruising at around 70 miles an hour, the powertrain does quiet down and Really, it's a nice refined driving experience. And as we pass the slower Corolla, plenty of power and responsive. Now, one thing that is interesting here, and we're going to find this out on some back roads and when I get off the highway, is that when you do pop it into sport mode, the steering actually lightens up a bit. It doesn't tighten like we see with sports crossovers or sports cars. And even though it would be in some way a detriment to a sports car or sports crossover. I find in sport mode, the CRV to be a bit more maneuverable. What I also like too is that with the seating position, you do sit pretty high up in the CRV. You have a nice commanding feel and presence over the roadways. Now the hood does stick out a bit, but that won't create any blind spot and you can see what's directly in front of you. But what I do love though, is that I have a lot of vision here where I can see what's in my blind spots, what's around me, and just really adds to the safety of this vehicle. On the brakes, pretty responsive. And we're going into the corner at around 35 miles an hour. Not a lot of body roll. And that right there 
is why the two liter in my mind is a better choice than going with the 1.5. I think the powertrain alone is probably why you'd want to go in the hybrid direction, but you're getting a whole list of features that come with the sport and sport touring that really just reinforces the notion of going hybrid uh, rather than going with the gas powered model. And really for this generation, both inside and out, Honda's done an amazing job with this crossover. Even though some people will say it's not dynamic, it's not quick in a straight line, and even though it does have a very sporty exterior, there's not a lot outside of the intangibles that's going to draw a lot of attention when it does drive by on the roadways. However, when you take a look at what buyers are looking for right now in 2023, they want fuel efficiency, they want refinement, they want comfort, and they also want practicality. And that's exactly what the 2023 CRV is offering. And as I said, when we had taken a look at the rear cargo area, this generation hybrid is more practical than the outgoing generation. So right then and there, it's a worthy upgrade over what you currently have in your driveway. To me, Honda reinforced all the positive attributes and all the reasons you bought a CRV for the past 10, 15 years, while also shoring up some of the weak spots that was found in last generation. Now, even though, of course, Hondas are reliable and they're built specifically for a type of buyer who's looking for that reliability and looking for a vehicle that's just a perfect daily driver, when you are comparing this to some of the rivals out there, I think the 2023 CRV is better equipped to fall in line with other vehicles in this market while also maybe being a vehicle that's one step above everyone else, especially when it comes to just the way this vehicle performs as a hybrid, but also the way it just drives on the roadways. And when you get behind the wheel, these seats, they're very comfortable. They're also very supportive. The bolstering is aggressive, which is a bit of a surprise for a vehicle that's not sports tuned or really focused on being a sporty vehicle. And yet I find this CRV to be perfect if you are somebody who drives every day on longer commutes or goes on those road trips. I think this is a vehicle that you're not gonna get tired of on a two to three hour drive. Now, since we are getting back on some of the twists and bends, gotta put it back in sport mode. And really, I find this CRV to be engaging, even though, of course, maybe you want to have a more aggressive turbocharged four-cylinder engine, but still, I think this is more than enough. Very confident with the handling. It does feel planted, relatively speaking, at around 35 miles an hour. And really, it's the steering and the chassis, to me, that really ties everything together. The stiffer chassis and suspension, the tighter steering, you don't see this from most Japanese brands. And that's something, as an enthusiast, as somebody who loves driving, I can really appreciate for sure. So to quickly wrap up this review, what the 2023 Honda CRV Hybrid brings to the table is the complete package, more so than the EXL I had featured late last year. And I'm not taking anything away from the gas-powered model. But when you take a look at the Sport or Sport Touring Hybrid, and you take a very long look at the exterior, it's inspiring. It has a nice road presence. It looks classy, it looks upscale, and very fitting for the price point. But also, and we gotta keep talking about those incentives, it's more fuel efficient, it's practical, more practical than the last generation, but also, the two liter four cylinder engine under the hood that's paired with the electric motors is so beneficial to what this crossover is offering for 2023. It feels so smooth on the roadways. There's a lot more confidence when you're entering and exiting highways. And then that just builds off of the great chassis and suspension that this crossover is designed and built on. And when you take a look at the pricing at around $40,000, I think you're getting a vehicle that feels very almost entry-level luxury-like compared to other crossovers in this market, whether they're gas-powered or hybrid. And even though some people will say that it's not the sportiest, it's not the quickest, I think a lot of people can overlook that simply because of what you get 
with this crossover. You have a good mix of technology, but also physical buttons and dials. You also have a vehicle that has a very upscale interior, the way it's laid out, I love it. And I just think that what Honda is doing right now in 2023 is really give you an experience that's far superior to what they had offered late last decade and up to 2022 when it comes to the CRV, where this just feels like a vehicle that's trying to appeal to buyers who maybe had not looked at buying a CRV in the past. And what they've done with this crossover is really remarkable. And I just think that when you are looking at buying a crossover at around $40,000 that is fairly friendly, you want something that is fuel efficient and also reliable. That's exactly what the CRV is. So if you are looking at buying a 2023 Honda CRV, I would lean more towards the hybrid. But regardless, I think what this generation is giving you is a lot more than what we had seen from Honda in the past. And that alone is why, whether it is gas powered or hybrid, definitely take a look at this new generation CRV. So, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe for more. Also, make sure to follow me on Instagram at Boston Auto Blog so you can see what I'll do and what vehicles I'll be featuring in the future. And I will see you guys next time.